I've been avoiding making this video, and not just because I might throw up. Hey ma'am fam, I am here at Universal's Islands of Adventure bringing you part two of the barf meter. I did this video over at the original park, Universal Studios Florida, and you said bring it to Islands of Adventure. This is the video where I ride every single ride in the park and rank it on a scale of one to 10 on the barf meter so you know which rides to ride and which to avoid if you have motion sickness. Now, why have I been avoiding this video? Is it because I'm scared of Velocicoaster? No, that ride's awesome. Is it because I think I might get sick on Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey? Maybe a little, but I love Harry Potter, so I'll let it go. Is it because this theme park has two of the wettest water rides in history? Yep. But for science, I will ride them along with every single other ride in the park, providing tips and tricks along the way. We got a lot to do. Let's get to it. Once again, friends, I am at Universal's Islands of Adventure today. This is their second theme park. This is home to the original Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Hogsmeade, Seuss Landing, Marvel Superhero Island, Jurassic Park, lots of fan favorite attractions like Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM, the Incredible Hulk Coaster, Velocicoaster, Jurassic Park River Adventure, and many, many more. Now, like I said, I already did this video at Universal Studios Florida, so check that out if you need a handy barf guide there. And I will say I'm more optimistic here. There are less simulators here. So I feel as though the barf meter might not top out as high as it did over there, but let's get to it. We are off on our journey and we're headed to my favorite land in the park and my favorite ride in the park to kick this off. Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM. The reason we're headed there first, well, it's the most popular ride in the park. I did purchase Express Pass for the video today. There are 16 rides in the park. Wanted to make sure I could get them all done. And pretty much every attraction in the park is on Express Pass, except for Hagrid's Magical Features Motorbike Adventure to you. So Hagrid's can be a little tricky because it's incredibly popular and there's no way to bypass the line, except for with the VIP tour. My best advice for Hagrid's and Universal in general is to stay at one of the premier resorts, which is the Hard Rock, Portofino Bay, or Royal Pacific, because then you will get free Express Pass Unlimited for your park day. And at any of the Universal Orlando resorts, you get early theme park access. And when that's here at Islands of Adventure, Hagrid's is typically a part of it. So if you would like to ride Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM, stay at a resort, get here bright and early, right at then. If you are not staying at a Universal Resort, there is usually a dip mid-morning, which is when we're headed to it right now. What typically happens at Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM is that everybody comes in for early theme park admission. Then, an hour later, a lot of other people rope drop it, but they're too late. They're already behind all of the resort guests and select annual pass holders that can come in early. So if you wait about an hour, hour and a half after the park opens, it usually dips a little bit. So when I got into the park today, around park open, it was at 120 minutes. It's been about an hour since the park opened now, and it's down to 90. So we're gonna do it now. We're gonna check it off the list, get it over with, and it'll be a great way to start this adventure, I think. Now Hagrid's is a roller coaster. It has a 48 inch height requirement. It has a very unusual seat. It's either a motor bike or a sidecar. Hello, good morning. I definitely recommend checking out the test seat at the front of the attraction if you're concerned because it's more of an unusual vehicle. Hagrid's, like a lot of attractions here at Universal, you have to put bigger items in a locker. If you have a lanyard or a fanny pack, you can ride with that. However, bigger bags like backpacks or purses, as well as hats, sunglasses, anything that could fall off, you need to put in a locker. Lockers are free for the smaller ones. Just make sure to take your park ticket or whatever you use to open it with you on the ride. First of all, I had to put up my camera and my mic, so... That's why this sounds a little bit different. But second of all, I'm in the single rider line, which normally I don't recommend here or Velocicoaster because they don't move basically any faster than the regular line. It's because most people come to parks in even numbers. So it's really hard to actually fill in spots. However, the team member was sweet. <laughs> could go check and see where the line is uh, and he told me where to look to see if it was worth it or not. Just love all the details everywhere in this land. It's my favorite. Favorite lands are Wizarding World of Harry Potter. 
and I'm really excited because I actually haven't ridden this ride in a while. I'm just usually filming other things and don't want to wait in the long line. So I'm very, very jazzed. Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM done, check, complete. First of all, single rider took about 40 minutes. Um, and when I got off the ride, it was posted down to a 65 minute wait. So it was about 25 minutes shorter than that, half of what it was when I got in the line. So if the single rider line is shorter than that bridge, they said it will move pretty quickly. Um, but if you've never been on it before or you get here and the wait's not that long like it is now at 65 minutes, I would recommend still going with everyone in your group because the queue is really fun. You bypass pretty much all the queue and the pre-show uh, and you don't get to sit by your friends and family. So it's a great attraction, one of my all-time favorites. I just love as a Harry Potter fan how much Harry Potter stuff you get. Not only do you get to see Hagrid, but you get to see Blast Ended Scroots and the Flying Car and Pixies and Unicorns and Devil's Snare and you go to the Forbidden Forest and it's just chef's kiss. Now, unlike some of the other coasters we're gonna do today, there are no inversions on Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM. It also only reaches a top speed of 50 miles an hour, which is less than either Velocicoaster or the Incredible Hulk. It does have a record-breaking seven launches, and it goes backwards at one point, and there's a drop at one point. So I'm gonna give it a seven on the bar feeder. It personally does not make me nauseous at all because I'm the kind of person who gets nauseous on simulators, not roller coasters. However, I have been with friends and family who come off this feeling motion sick, primarily because of the backwards part. And there's one bank during the backwards part that makes people feel a little queasy. I will say, if you have been on Expedition Everest Legend of the Forbidden Mountain TM, that is a steeper bank and I believe a faster backwards moment. So if that doesn't make you nauseous, I'm gonna assume Hagrid's won't make you nauseous, but it is something to be aware of. Again, this is my favorite ride in the entire universe. So for me, this is well worth risking getting nauseous on. Um, however, maybe just don't have a butterbeer right before you get on the attraction. But this one is a can't miss for me. Now that we've got that out of the way, that's the big ticket one. Uh, we can go enjoy the rest of our day. Let's, uh, we got the big ticket ride right out of the way, but let's go get one of the big nausea rides out of the way. Gonna head over to Hogwarts. Oh boy, I've not ridden this ride in a minute either. I've watched the queue, but the ride makes me want to barf, which I guess is this video is all about, huh? Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, another attraction that requires you to put your items in lockers, except for things like crossbodies, which I normally wear to save time, but I had to bring a whole change of clothes. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey has a 48 for eight inch height requirement. It also has a little bit more of an unusual seat, so recommend checking out that test seat if you wanna make sure you'll be comfortable. I have to say this is not the best Harry Potter ride, but it is the most Harry Potter ride. Not only is this the ride inside Hogwarts and the queue is gonna weave you through the dungeons and their biology area, Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom, Dumbledore's office, Gryffindor common room, and more. But the attraction itself is gonna show you Dementors, the Chamber of Secrets, and Acromantula, and Quidditch, and Dragons, and many of your favorite characters. So in my opinion, it's a must ride at least once for Harry Potter fans, but I'm expecting it to top the scales like Gryffindor at the last minute when Dumbledore decides to give his favorite house extra points. Despite Slytherin really having nerds the win, I'm not bitter. Make founder selfies happen. The Potter, the boy who lived, the boy who survived by the seat of his pants is more like it. Ah, uh, but you're wrong, Salazar. It was love that saved young Harry, not luck. Something to remember. Also, I've gone through the Express Pass entrance, 
and you do cut off part of the queue if you go this way. You cut off the dungeon uh, where you see like the mirror of Erised and the potions classroom. You cut off the herbology, but you do enter right here in Dumbledore's office. So if you are a Harry Potter fan, I recommend going through the whole queue at least once. That is my experience. Rarely indeed too wrong. Now, if you will, please proceed to the defense against the dark arts class. Oof, forbidden journey. First things first. I do forget how fun that ride is because I don't ride a lot because of this. I mean, it makes me scream because since I don't ride it a lot, I forget when the spiders and the Dementors and things jump out at you and it, it, it startles you. So it is a good, fun thrill ride. I mean, again, you get to see so much Harry Potter stuff. That said, this is a 10 on the barf meter. The mix of simulator scenes with practical effects is good, but those simulator scenes, particularly the Quidditch scene, make me so very nauseous. On top of that, it's got a very unique ride system where you're sitting on a bench and it's attached to a robotic arm and the arm moves you like this through the movements of both the simulator scenes and the practical sets. And at points you are basically vertical, upside down with your head down. So the movements combined with the simulator scenes it's, it's a hard 10 for me. It's one of the most nauseating rides I've ever been on. If you get motion sick, but you want to ride it, be careful. Also know there is a fan blowing air on you. So if you start feeling nauseous, I like to close my eyes and point my face up towards the fan. And that does help. All Harry Potter fans, I feel like you should at least walk through the queue. And if you do want to ride this, don't do it right after Butterbeer and maybe wait to the end of the day. So that way, if you don't feel good, um, you're not feeling bad for the whole rest of the day. It doesn't tend to get nearly as long in the line as Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM, so you can usually get on it pretty quick. <sighs> but uh, that's one of the big ones out of the way for today. And uh, let's finish out Wizarding World, shall we? Rounding out Wizarding World of Harry Potter with Flight of the Hippogriff. This is kind of your kiddie coaster for this part. It has a 36, 36 inch high requirement, and it's a cute little coaster that puts you in a woven hippogriff. I actually really like it as a Harry Potter fan because one, you get a really great view of Hogwarts and two, you get to see the Buckbeak animatronic, which is really cool. And you can't really see it unless you go on the ride. So if it doesn't have a long line and you're a Harry Potter fan, check it out. Also, if you've got little ones, I can't write some of the other stuff. Check this one out. If you listen closely, you can hear Fang barking inside of Hagrid's. I thought that was only a Hollywood thing. How exciting that it's here now. Flight of the Hippogriff complete. I would give that one a four on the barf meter. It has a little more zip than it looks like. It's longer than an attraction like the Barnstormer, but at its core, it's still a very family friendly coaster. So if any kind of roller coaster movement makes you nauseous, then this one might as well, but it's much more tame than either of the other rides in this land. It's much more tame than most of the other coasters at Universal. So that one's a solid one. Again, it has a long line to skip for most people, but if it doesn't, the Buckbeak is really, really cute and it's a nice little ride. Now I'm done at Wizarding World of Harry Potter. I'm not taking the Hogwarts Express, which is the train that connects the two parks. So it would take me over there and I need to be over here today. So it's kind of like a ride slash mode of transportation. It's not very nausea inducing at all because you're just sitting there looking out the window um, on, a, on a train, which is cool. So we are gonna head, should I go back to Seuss or forward to Jurassic? Hmm. 
What do you got in there, King Kong? Technically, yes, that ride is this way. But I chose Jurassic Park. I want to get out a few more of the big rides out of the way before I consume anything, just to be safe, you know? Which means we're headed to Velocicoaster next. It's a really lovely day here today. It's not super busy. For reference, I am here on a weekday in the middle of May, so after spring break, before summer crowds. I definitely wouldn't need Express Pass normally on a day like today. I got it to ensure I could get everything done. But I would not recommend it on a day like today, unless, of course, you are getting it for free with your hotel room. But this could be a really good time to visit. Late May, it's not quite as hot as it will be all summer. The crowds are much, much lower. So after spring break, before Memorial Day, it's a good time to come. Now, Velocicoaster, one of my favorite rides ever. <laughs> Velocicoaster is certainly one of the more intense roller coasters you're gonna find here at Universal Orlando. It has a 155 foot tall drop. It's right there, four inversions and a maximum speed of 70 miles an hour. 5151 inch height requirement. Test seat out front again, but I don't think this seat is as constricting as the seats in Harry Potter. And y'all, it is so, so fun. And bonus, one of my favorite queues ever. Velocicoaster just recently joined Express Pass, which is awesome. It's also usually part of that early morning uh, access for resort guests in certain APs. It also is a single rider line, which I do not recommend. You do not get to see the cool parts of the queue. And even though it's the newest ride here, you can usually find it under an hour. So I would absolutely recommend using the regular line or express and skipping single rider. Because I assure you, you don't want to skip this. There are GameQ lockers here at Velocicoaster. And this one has a metal detector, so you cannot bring lanyards or crossbodies or phones or anything on this one like you can on other attractions. Do note, they only have the free smaller lockers here. If you need the bigger ones, you're gonna have to get those in the Discovery Center. And make sure you remember your color, your dinosaur, or your number, because you're not coming back to the same spot. You are gonna come back on the other side of these lockers. So it's not gonna look quite the same. Velocicoaster check. God, that ride is so much fun. It is such a smooth roller coaster. It's just a blast. One thing I will say, even if you're using Express, it does take a little longer than some other attractions. It still probably took me like 20, 30 minutes to get all the way to the experience, even with Express Pass. So keep that in mind when planning your day. Obviously, that's much shorter than the posted wait time, so it's still great. Okay. Um, the rate it. See, I'm not someone who gets nauseous on roller coaster, so this doesn't impact me as far as motion sickness goes. However, if you do get motion sick on roller coasters, I could see where this would be a problem. You go zero to 50 on a takeoff, and then again, 40 to 70 on a takeoff. Again, there's four inversions. There are a lot of moments of that feeling of your stomach, the top of that top hill, the Moses source barrel, there's a hanging inversion. I'm gonna give it, if roller coasters make you nauseous, and eight on the barf meter. For me, doesn't hit the barf meter, but it is significantly more intense than Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM. You are the kind of person that roller coasters make you nauseous. It's a long, lots of inversions, lots of stomach whoopsies moments. So I think an eight feels good. However, if you like roller coasters, this one cannot be beat. One of the best rides at Universal, but let's keep going. I have to ride a water ride soon. Hello. Tango. Hi, Tango. Say hi. 
Girl. You're very sweet, she Tango. Loves that camera yeah, you. Oh, oh, you're quite, so you're quite a ham. You're quite a ham. She absolutely is. She's yeah. Do a little diva, just like her big sister Blue. <laughs> and we are working on not putting everything into our mouth. Sure. Everything is a sure. Toy. I understand. Everything belongs to her. Mm -hmm. You want to try giving her a little? Oh pie? yeah. Hi. Very, oh, she's very so nice. sweet. Yeah, we're working real hard on that with her. Unfortunately, yeah. if you try that with blue, uh, you won't have a hand. Yeah, anymore. that's true. Uh, so I can this imagine is definitely that's true. the way to go. Yeah. Would you like to get a picture? Yes, together? please. A little surprise and delight moment. One of the baby raptors was out and about as opposed to in the raptor encounter. Raptor encounter is one of my favorite underrated things here at Islands of Adventure. It's right here across from Velocicoaster. And you can either meet a baby raptor like I just did, or you can meet one of the full size raptors like blue. And I'm telling y'all, it is so fun and you will get some of the best pictures because everybody looks at it like, why are people getting scared? You dumb idiots. And then you actually do it and you get close to the raptor and you're like, oh, I get it. Makes me jump every single time. Huh. All right, it's time friends. Water ride number one. Jurassic Park River Adventure is a calm and relaxing boat ride through the Jurassic Park where you'll see some nice friendly dinosaurs and definitely nothing will go wrong and you won't end up seeing the raptors or a giant T-Rex and head down an 85 foot plunge. Except for all those things do happen. However, it's super fun, especially if you're like me and a big fan of the Jurassic Park films. It's got that amazing music. And I think the T-Rex is one of the coolest animatronics here. So I'm pretty excited, although I might get wet, which reminds me, this isn't gonna work. Now I'm ready. You may notice I don't have my signature hat on. That's because they actually ask you not to wear hats on this ride because they could fly off on the drop. So I'm just gonna go like this and ask for the back row and hope it works. I do quite enjoy that ride, despite it being a water ride. You don't really get very wet sitting in the back and pulling my head down and kind of going like this on the drop. I'm barely wet at all. Um, and I think it is a fun attraction, but what to give it on the barf meter? I think I'm gonna give it a three. It's really not very nauseating. 95% of the ride is actually a very like slow, calm boat ride through Jurassic Park with animatronic dinosaurs. The big thrill from the attraction, of course, comes from that big drop, but I don't really think that's nausea inducing to most people. It's maybe more of like a fear of heights and like anxiety inducing. Um, and it is certainly thrilling and you get that kind of whoop, like whoop, no feel in your stomach, but it's really not very nauseating. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna put it at a three. I think one drop versus like a whole roller coaster, there's a huge difference in those two things. That wraps up Jurassic Park. And we are headed to Skull Island, particularly because I cannot ride Pterodon Flyers, which is this in the sky attraction, but you have to have a kid to ride it. Like there's a height requirement going the other way. And I'm here alone and don't own a child. Don't own a child, don't have a child. So uh, I don't get to ride it. I've ridden it once though. I rode it once on a special occasion. They were letting adults ride solo. Oh, so fun. So fun, but can't do it today. Next up, Skull Island Raid of Kong. It has a 36 inch height requirement, same ride technology as Fast and the Furious Supercharged. We're going to get on one of those large party style buses, 3D glasses, and there will be big screens all around you. The majority of this attraction is going to be a simulator where you are in a large bus like Fast and the Furious Supercharged, wearing 3D glasses, and the events of Skull Island will unfold around you featuring Kong and dinosaurs. Now, this isn't my favorite attraction by a long shot, but I do recommend people ride it at least once because of the giant Kong animatronic at the end. He is amazing, but Destruction usually has a longer line. It's a very slow day today. Most things are under 30 minutes and it still has a 55 minute wait. And that's just because these cars 
are slow to load and unload. So it's, you know, one you can skip for the most part just because there's so many better attractions in this park, Wizarding World, Jurassic Park, Hulk, but see where it stacks. Skull Island Reign of Kong complete. One thing that was interesting is that there must be something wrong with the main entrance into the attraction because we bypassed that whole part where you go around the outside and go into the big doors and you hear the Kong, Kong, Kong. We bypassed that whole thing and went straight into the cave, which is weird. I've never seen that happen before. Now, let me start by saying this doesn't make me nauseous at all and a lot of simulators do. Uh, I think it's because it's such a big vehicle and because there are practical sets as well. Um, however, the fact that it is 3D and a simulator for the majority of the attraction, I'm gonna put it at a five right smack dab in the middle because I think those two factors tend to make at least some people nauseous. Now, I'll also say I've never actually met anyone who this attract has made nauseous. This doesn't upset any of my friends, any of my family members. However, want to give you that kind of like go with caution if just the idea of a simulator would make you nauseous. But it's a fun attraction. Again, I wouldn't prioritize it over most things in the park, but that animatronic band is very cool. And now we are off to my least favorite land. Welcome to Toon Lagoon, my least favorite land in the park. Why you ask? Well, because the two attractions here get you sopping, soaking, looks like you just jumped into a pool with your clothes on wet. I'll ride them in this video, I promise. But for now, I'm actually skipping the rides and gonna grab something to eat here at Blondie's. Blondie's is a sandwich shop known for a big one called the Dagwood that's got multiple different kinds of meat on it, uh, cheese and toppings. They also just have regular deli sandwiches, tuna salad, roast beef, turkey, or ham, and you can dress them as you'd like. Not the most exciting theme park food, but on a day where I'm riding everything and trying not to throw up, I figured this would probably go over better than something fried and greasy. Here's my sandwich. I did the build your own. It's got turkey, Swiss, tomato, lettuce. I don't love mayonnaise, but I added mayonnaise so it wouldn't be dry. And I chose potato salad as my side. It tastes like a turkey sandwich, which I know is surprising. It's got a multi-grain bun, ample amount of toppings, the produce is fresh. Is this something I would recommend? No, because there is much more exciting and unique food around the park. Some of my favorites here are, of course, eating at Wizarding World of Harry Potter, particularly the fish and chips. I love the tots over at Green Eggs and Ham and Seuss Landing. I even like the uh, fried chicken over in Seuss Landing at Circus McGurk's Cafe Stupendous. I like the burgers over at Burger Digs at Jurassic Park better. This is fine if you want a generic sandwich, but you're better off spending money somewhere else, but it'll do for today. I'm actually going to skip Marvel Superhero Island as well for now, because this does have some more intense, bigger thrill rides and I wanna let my sandwich settle. So I'm gonna keep moving and do Seuss Landing, and then I'll come back and do Marvel, and then Tin Lagoon. Captain America's out. Hey, buddy. Now, what I will say about this land is I recently did the Marvel superhero character dining experience that a lot of people don't realize you can do here, and it had Spider-Man and Captain America, it had Storm and some of the other X-Men. It was actually really fun. And I thought a good character meal, if you have kids that want to meet some of the Marvel characters, they're not going to do it at Disney here. So this is your chance. Uh, you can check that video out if you'd like more info. But for now, let's go to the calming family land of Seuss. Made it over to Seuss Landing where there are actually four attractions. A lot of people don't realize there's so much packed into this, this very small land. Also, I have no confirmation on this at all. Not starting a rumor. 
However, I couldn't help but notice this construction wall right here. And I can't help but wonder if that's to get rid of McElliott's pool, which is a set piece behind that wall. You may know that in 2021, the Seuss family decided to stop publication of a few Dr. Seuss books because they, quote, portray people in ways that are hurtful and wrong. They were written long ago and have some outdated notions in them. And one of those stories is McElliott's pool. So just a thought I had. They also have, if I ran the zoo here and nods to Mulberry Street, which were also on that list. So who knows if those will ever go away, but just a thought in my brain. First up in Seuss Landing, the Seuss High in the Sky trolley train ride. This is the people mover of Seuss Landing. It's just a sweet little train that takes you through some scenes and overlooks the rest of the land. It's pretty cute. I can't imagine making you anyone nauseous, but here we go. going to give the high in the sky Seuss trolley train ride a 1.5 simply because it is a vehicle and it moves you forward so I guess someone could get nauseous on this I feel very bad if you do because it's literally just like going forward on a little train it's really cute though and there are two different tracks that you might hear or see something slightly different depending on which side you board on great for the kiddos good filler ride but uh we got three more rides here in Seuss so Time to move my caboose. Next stop, the Caro Susel, which is a carousel. No height requirement here. Anyone can enjoy this one. And it's basically just a carousel, but with cute Seuss animals to ride. Again, don't see this making a lot of people motion sick, but for science, here we go. First things first, shout out to the team members on the PA who did the load and unload instructions in Rhyme. Amazing. Second of all, I give the Carasusel a two on the barfometer scale, slightly higher than the train because the nature of this is that it is spinning. But if you have been on any merry-go-round or carousel in the entire world and it didn't bother you, then you should be fine here. From one kid classic to another, we are at one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. This is the Dumbo style spinner attraction of this park. But I actually really like this one because it's a game. You are gonna be in a one fish, two fish, red fish or blue fish and it'll let you know when you get in there. And then you need to listen to the little rhyme because it'll tell you to go up or down. And if you don't listen, you could get wet. So I listen. Beware, give it a try. But beware, from down below, there are creatures there who will soak you head to toe. No, thank you. The other way, two fish, blue fish, up, up, up. One fish, red fish, down, down, down. I really do think that is a cute ride. Um, I'm gonna give that a two as well on the barf meter. Same as Carasusel, same logic applies by the nature of the fact that it spins. It's higher than the train, but if you have ridden Dumbo or Magic Carpets of Aladdin or Triceratops spin or the Kang and Kudos twirling saucers over in the other park, it's the same thing, and I don't think it makes many people, if any people, nauseous. So in Seuss Landing, we have one more ride to go. I'm getting closer to have to face my foe. Now 
Next up, The Cat in the Hat. This is a dark ride through the original Cat in the Hat story. 36 inch height requirement. Now, sometimes these cars spit. So I think this may be higher than uh, you might expect from a dark ride, but we shall see. Also, the Cat in the Hat animatronic, a little bit of a nightmare. No offense, Cat, but you're terrifying. <laughs> That ride is so bizarro. Like, I really think this land is cute and underrated and underappreciated for the details, and it's fun, and people love these characters, but that ride is... Also, can we talk about how the fish is, like, the villain, but he should be the hero? Like, this weird cat man breaks in while these two kids are home alone, and then brings his little, like, creature sidekicks. They destroy the house, and they're, like don't tell your mom. And the fish is like, could you not knock me out of my bowl for one and two? Like, could you leave? Anyway, I feel bad for the fish. Um, I don't think that spins as much as it once did in my experience. So I'm going to give it a, based on how I wrote it today, a three. The vehicle still kind of goes like this. And we did one full loop but it's not like spinny spinny like I thought it did in my brain. So yeah, I think a three feels good. Um, if that changes, if it starts spinning again more, I would up that, but it didn't seem too bad. It was for the most part a harmless dark ride. Well, in Seuss we are done, but we sure had some fun. We're getting closer to Tune. I'm scared it's so soon. Made it back into Marvel Superhero Island where we've got four rides to do, starting with the incredible Hulk coaster. This has a 54, 54 inch height requirement, seven inversions, top speed, 67 miles an hour, and a sweet soundtrack from Patrick Stump of Fallout Boy. This is a good one, but I think it'll rank higher on the barf meter scale. Hulk is another one that you're gonna have to put your stuff in, and like Velocicoaster, you're going through metal detectors, so you need to put everything in there except your park ticket. Sunglasses, hats, backpacks, fanny packs, all go right in here. that soundtrack slaps. Patrick Stump did not have to go that hard, but he did and he did it for us. What to rank Incredible Hulk Coaster? I'm gonna give it an 8.25, slightly higher than Velocicoaster because one, there are almost twice as many inversions on this one. And two, it's not quite as smooth. It's still very smooth compared to other roller coasters, but not quite as smooth as Velocicoaster. And that doesn't contribute to nausea, I would say, but just a general feeling a little shaky and rattled getting off. Again, I don't get nauseous on roller coasters really, so if you don't either, you should be fine on this one. But if going upside down and the oof feeling gets you, uh, this one is intense, so it could make you upset. Now we're headed to Storm Force Acceleration with Accelatron, not Acceleration, Accelatron. My bad, Storm, I did not mean to disrespect you this way. This is the teacups, but super, I guess. Hello. No high requirement, but also no lap sitting. So keep that in mind. And uh, whew, this is gonna be an interesting one.
first thing, Storm was there, which was very cool. It's actually one of my lifelong dreams to ride an attraction with a character from that attraction. Like Alice and Mad Hatter used to ride uh, teacups with somebody first thing in the morning. Aladdin used to ride Magic Carpets of Aladdin. Storm didn't want to ride, even though I asked her, which doesn't feel like a good sign. Um, okay, I think that's worse than the teacups. The turntables that you're on make it so that even if you're not spinning the wheel like the teacups, you still whip around a lot more than if you don't spin on the teacups. They're moving quick. I got to give that like an 8.5. That is very nauseating. You're just spinning for like 90 seconds. And if you spin the wheel, you can go even faster, which would make it even worse. Obviously, if you can't ride the teacups, I would not get on this. It's a good filler ride, though, if you've got little ones. Little kids seem to like this. They don't understand that life's a nightmare when you spin that much yet. Um, otherwise, it's definitely a skit for most people. Two more in this land, though. And one of them I'm a little afraid of. Next up, Dr. Doom's Fear Fall. This is a 52.52 inch height requirement. And it is, I guess, somewhat akin to Tower of Terror, but kind of in reverse, if that makes sense. The thrill isn't the drop. The thrill is you don't know when they're going to shoot you up that 185 foot tower. And then they kind of slowly bob you up and down to bring you back down. It gives you a great view of the property. But, you know, I've never thought about this one on a barf meter type way. So I'm curious to see what we rate it. Dr. Doom Fearfall crushed it. Um, I'm going to give it a six on the barf meter. I don't think it's as high as Tower of Terror or Mission Breakout because it's not as long. The most thrilling part is when you shoot up. It's kind of that anticipation. But then once you shoot up, you like very gently like bounce down. So I don't think it's super nauseating. I think that because it's a drop ride, by nature, it may make some people's stomach more upset than others. Uh, but generally speaking, I think this one's pretty tame compared to the other ones. And now I have to go ride the one I'm scared of here at Marvel Landing. Also, what I will say about Dr. Doom's Fearfall is that similar to Storm, I don't think it's a must-do for most people. It usually doesn't have too long of a line, so it's a good filler attraction. But I think Hulk and this next one are definitely more popular and should be higher on your must ride list here. But I guess that's enough for procrastinating and it's time to ride The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man. Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man has a 44 zero inch height requirement and it is the same technology as Transformers The Ride 3D over at Universal Studios, meaning you are gonna move through both practical sets and screens and it's in 3D in what they call the Scoop Mobile. You see, we are being recruited by the Daily Bugle. We're the interns, and uh, we are being sent out on the scene to help get the scoop from uh, JJ, who's super friendly and nice about it. Definitely a super safe and non-toxic work environment here at the Daily Bugle. <laughs> Although, going through the Express, there are some fun things that you don't get to see the regular way. The regular way, of course, you get more of the Daily Bugle office. But look at this, a Stan Lee cameo. I've never noticed that. We love that. Ooh, the photo processing lab. You don't get to see that in the regular queue. This is fun. Oh, no. All right, there aren't any goggles there. I'm assuming there's some up here. Spider-Man. 
That one gets me. I don't know why, even though it's the exact same ride system and technology as Transformers, that one makes me much more nauseous. I don't know if it's the graphics that you're actually seeing or like what the, the movement of the vehicles, but it's like everything that could make you nauseous happens. You spin in a full 360 several times, you swing, you go up high, it's in 3D, it's a simulator. Also it gets you wet, which for most people doesn't probably matter, but it, it matters to me. Not like a lot, but. Also though, shout out to Nick, the team member who confirmed that Electro that I saw a poster for him in the queue in the loading area. And then also he's on the ride. He is Jamie Foxx from the Andrew Garfield Spider-Mans. And um, I'm not a comics girly, I'm an MCU girly. And so I never put together that that's the same character because they look so different in the Spider-Man movies versus on the ride, but that's kind of cool. Um, I think I'm giving this one an 8.75. Knowing that Forbidden Journey is a hard 10, I want it to be a, a safe distance away from that because I think Forbidden Journey is for sure the most nauseating, but this one is still pretty high. If motion simulators get you, if 3D gets you, be very careful on this one. The technology is very cool. The scoop mobile is very cool. And if you are a comic books fan, there's tons of characters in it. But for me, whew. and now it seems I can put the moment off no longer. We're headed back to Toon Lagoon for our final two rides. First up, Dudley Do Rides Ripsaw Falls. It's like Splash Mountain, but worse somehow. How, you ask? Well, you get a thousand times wetter than you do on Splash Mountain. Also, you have to sit uncomfortably with your legs straddled around the person in front of you. That's why I'm doing this one first, because it's more terrible because of the ride vehicle. The kids even care about Dudley Do-Right. No, but that's the theme here. That's a 44 inch high requirement and a 40 minute wait. That's one of the longest waits in the park right now. It usually is one of the longest waits in the park. Doesn't make any sense to me, but I'm gonna go put my stuff in a locker. And here we go. For the record, you don't have to put your stuff in the locker, but I recommend it if you like your stuff. Because I paid for a locker, since lockers aren't required, you do have to pay for them here. I'm gonna ride both of these before I do my reviews. So next up is Popeye and Bluto's Bilge Rat Barges. It's got a 42, 42 inch height requirement, and it is a round raft ride akin to Cali River Rapids, themed to Popeye. <laughs> Well, at least my rain jacket works. I am sopping wet though. The rain jacket protected my hair because I like just had a little breathe hole and I like held my hood around me the whole time in the last two rides. But my skirt is soaked through all the way. My shoes, my socks, my underpants, a nightmare. I, I just cannot condone these rides. I do not think they're fun at all because you end up so soaking wet and miserably uncomfortable. Everybody getting off these rides is walking like a cowboy. But you know what? Who am I to yuck yums? Maybe you love the feeling of your thighs chafing. I don't know. All right. Now, what to rate these two? 
let me go on the record and say I do not care for Dudley Do Right's Rip Soft Balls at all. I don't really care for the IP. I don't think many people know the Dudley Do Right cartoons. Uh, you get one big whoosh and then a couple other little whooshes, but it's also so uncomfortable. Like, it's not the seat. I mean, it's a little awkward to get in, but like you are straddling the person in front of you and behind you. They're straddling you and like you might not know them and like you're touching and like, ugh. Um, but as far as barf meter goes, I'm going to give it a four, uh, just cause there are a couple of those whoosh moments. Um, but like Jurassic Park, it's not super nauseating. It's just that like stomach in your throat kind of feeling, but it is a little more intense than Jurassic Park, I would say, but not really a nausea inducing attraction unless touching a wet stranger makes you nauseous, which I get. Popeye and Bluto's on the other hand, again, it's a round raft ride, but you don't really spin or anything. You kind of just ping pong off of the walls, you do get way wetter on that one. You get soaking, soaking wet. It looks like you jumped into a pool with your clothes on. You're so wet. I do like that one a little bit more though. I think the theming is better. It's been upkept a little bit better and it, it's less awkward, the seat. But um, I'm gonna give that one a three. I don't really think it's nausea inducing at all unless you're like me and the idea of getting wet makes you a little nauseous, but um, you're gonna get wet, but you may not be nauseous. Well, friends, we did it. Rode every single attraction here at Islands of Adventure and ranked them on the barf meter from Seuss Landing to Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. Which of these attractions makes you nauseous? Let us know down in the comments. I know it can be different for everybody. And hey, also come and join our Discord where we and the Man Fam have lots of conversations about all kinds of things, including theme parks. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly, and it has been so magical except for the last like 30 minutes. Now go watch the Universal Studios Florida version of this. Bye.